Okay, should we go live? What's the time? It's quarter two. Oh, yeah. I've clicked to go live. I hope it sounds okay. Yay, we live! Yay, we live! Why do I look like I'm staring at the screen? Okay, well, we are live. We're not sure what you're seeing because there is a substantial delay between the screen and the camera. We are coming to you live this evening from the house of McLennan Smith at... Shall I give the address? What do you think? Some freak will arrive and murder us in our beds. Maybe the person who dis 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 maybe the person who disliked our video mm. uh, before it was even played will come and murder us in our beds, and so we won't give you. We'll just the address. give us a thumbs down by the window. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're in we're in Durban, Westville, and we are at the house of McLennan Smith, and uh, well, that's why things look a bit different from the house of Hendry in this yes. part of the world. Also, because we have a different setup, I'm on my phone. I'm not playing Candy Crush. I'm reading the messages. So, sorry if it looks rude. And I'm having a very fine Shiraz, courtesy of my father-in-law. It has now got three or four. No. Wow. It's got eight fruit flies in it now, so it must be pretty good. What are you having? I'm having white wine. You're having white Badger wine. Mountain. Badger and Mountain. Badger and Mountain. Yeah. Cheers. I left my badger in mountain up in Johannesburg. Okay, so our next episode, episode number three, thank you to all of you who have observed our episodes thus far. It's always nice taking you along for the ride. Our next episode is basically about a deluge. And I think the interesting thing about going to Botswana when we did was, as I mentioned before, the fact that nobody else goes there at that time of the year and that's because well it's normally very wet but what was so great about it and what you'll see in this episode I think is how few people there were and if you double the effects of the weather with COVID uh, it made it even emptier so although it was a bit odd having so few people around us it really was very special indeed we must talk about our oh, last yes. live chat yes now in our last live chat, and I'm not going to say the name of the person who gave this advice to us simply because, well, you never know if people want to be mentioned live or not. This book by Andrew, how's this for a name? Andrew. You don't even know. I, I can't even say it. But Andrew St. Pierre White. Andrew St. Pierre White. Uh, I don't think he was French, possibly Belgian. South African. He's South African wrote this pack on 4x4 exploring and this very kind soul wrote to me and said well you know this is what we were talking about and this is the pack and he then dropped it off at my father-in-law's surgery which I think was extremely kind and I'm most grateful for it and it will definitely come in handy on our next trip which will hopefully be in October. Mm. That will be great. We're hoping to go to Manapools with Chobi 4x4 Magnificent company. If you're thinking about overlanding anywhere near Southern Africa, we had just asked, will you be going to Manipur? Show me four by four is your go to. And yes, Ria, we will be going to Manipur with any luck. We need to book this next week. Can I give you a question? You may. Or you may just question? answer it. Bobby, well, I don't know how to answer. Bobby, um, is Botswana having more rain than usual this year? Yes, Botswana did have more rain than usual this year. Um, how the rain works generally in this part of the world, and you must understand that drawing, I've often said this on the live drives, was that the concept of an average rainfall in many parts of Africa is ridiculous because although you can calculate an average, it's so variable that it becomes almost meaningless. So in a place like Maun, which is the town where we kind of started off, the average rainfall is probably around about 350 to 400 millimeters a year, which is about, what's that, 12, yeah, about 12 to 15 inches a year. And so it's very dry, uh, semi-arid, semi-desert in some cases, and often it's drought riddled. But then you'll have these years where you have massive downpours of rain. And I think by the time we'd got there, they'd had over 600 millimetres or so, which was 24 yeah. inches, which is extremely unusual for that part of the world. And I really like it when it's like that, unless you're trying to game view. It's quite difficult game viewing because the bush is very thick. There's water absolutely everywhere, which means animals really don't have to concentrate around water. But it's so green 
and Maon itself, the town, is, I mean, I've been there three or four times before this, and I have to tell you that there are a few places on earth that I would have selected to live in uh, less enthusiastically than I would have Maon. Kinshasa comes to mind. Uh, not because the people are unkind or unpleasant or anything like that, but because it's a dust bowl. It's really, really dry. But when we were there this year, it was just stunning. And I mean, I'm sure you saw in the first episode, the videos of the place make it look like it's a green kind of paradise. And most of the time, it's really just a uh, dust bowl. It really is. So yes, in a long-winded way, there was more rain than usual. There's so many nice questions, yes. but I'll stick to Botswana and then I'll go back if we've got time. Yes. Uh, Warika asks, um, what are the local pe people like and were there loads of checkpoints and roadblocks? That's from Warwick. Um, Warwick, the people were very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and especially the park officials. They were really fantastic. Accommodating, friendly. If we, I mean, the one place that we went, we had to change a booking. And then there are no phones or anything like that. I mean, there's a little bit of cell phone signal and people really bent over backwards to take the money we'd spent at one place and, and sort of move it across. I lost permits in Savuji. Uh, I don't know how I did that. I lost it in the three feet between the office and the car. And everyone was extremely accommodating and friendly and very nice. So, yes, they are nice. Not a lot of roadblocks and checkpoints. I think you're probably thinking of a place like, I don't know, perhaps Zimbabwe, where obviously there's a lot of political trouble and there are a lot more people. In Botswana, there are just over 2 million people in a massive country. You know, that kind of, there's nigh on no corruption. There's no nonsense. We were stopped at one meat checkpoint. It's a veterinary checkpoint where we were told to get out of the car, sterilize our feet, get back in the car, go away, carry on. No aggression, no nastiness. We were stopped by a policeman once because um, our number plate was broken um, because I don't know why it was broken. Well, probably because we're in tear. Yeah, we were going through sand or bushes or whatever it was. And yeah, policeman said, I'm going to have to find you. So I said, OK. And he looked around the car and he said, is this your car? And I said, no, we hired it. So he said, OK, well, that's fine. Please just get it fixed. And off we went. So, yeah, really. It's so easy to travel there if you have enough yeah. water and fuel. Um, okay, I'm going back to Botswana stuff. Josh, any plans to visit, how do you say that? Solido? Sorry. Solido. Yeah, is that how you Solido say Solido Hills. Yeah, and Okavango to see the car might be. Yes, so Josh would love to go back to the Okavango at some stage. It's totally impossible to go there when we went there. So we would have gone on to the edge of the Okavango into Maremi, but it was just simply too wet, so that wasn't possible at all. And, um, yeah, Solido Hills, the other side of the ok Okavango, yes, for sure, but obviously on a different trip. I'd love to go back there. I'd love to go and do a, a proper Okavango exploration. Mm. Next question. Okay. Yeah. Arbeard, how far north in Chobe do you go? Do you go all the way to Kasani? Yes, Arbeard, we did go all the way to Kasani. We went from, how much am I allowed to say? Am I allowed to give the route? Yeah, I okay. know. So we went, we went from we Mound to, to Savuti, <laughs> and then from Savuti we went up to Chobi Riverfront and into Kasani, and then from Kasani we cut down towards the south. Um, Reina wants to know why didn't we take the disco? Um, we didn't take the discovery for two reasons. One, it wasn't offered to us. B, the, we were offered this magnificent land cruise about Chobe 4x4 and you know while I I don't know that I want no I can say this to my fa father-in-law because he's since bought a Toyota that land cruiser we took felt so solid safe and like it wasn't ever going to break mm -hmm. and so it was the perfect car for us to go in it really was just fantastic magnificent vehicle it was really it just it's the perfect car to be doing that in. I was very, very glad not to be driving a Land Rover. Sorry to those fans of the Land Rover. Uh, now I've got to go back. I saw a question from Atlanta Jules. Uh, oh, Atlanta Jules, is a book on of your adventures on the horizon? No, not yet. No book on our adventures just yet. I don't think we've I been think on enough of them one. yet. We will eventually write one, yes. 
But I think it needs to be fiction. Otherwise, you know, I'll write things about my wife that'll make her upset. And, you know, I, have, I have to live with it. I am writing another book on a follow-up to A Year in the Wild. So this will be the third in the trilogy. Very exciting. Watch this space. Okay. Max, Mom, any animals, birds, insects you've never seen before? Oh. I'm thinking maybe that we... Max, Mom? Any birds or insects that I haven't seen before? Well, maybe if we relate to the trip that we never saw hmm? in South Africa, that we saw in Botswana. That was then. I'm confused. Okay, just answer that then. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know what I mean. Um, I think there were a few lifers. I can't think of them offhand. In fact, there were definitely a few lifers, a couple of waders that I hadn't seen before. Uh, it, they're just not popping into mind at the moment. Um. I have to be quite careful with the birding because while I enjoy it very much, I would say that my wife is a moderately interested birder. I like it. I just don't like LBJs. So if it's when colourful it becomes too much. and big and eats other things, she's very interested in it. But if it's very small and flying through the grass, she is really not particularly. What did we see this afternoon? Oh, and this afternoon we saw in the garden here a palm nut vulture. It was very exciting. It was very exciting. It was carrying a chicken breast that had clearly been given to it by a kind resident of Durban, Westville. Rachel <laughs> wants to know, how did you handle the COVID-19 problems? Because by then the borders were closed. And Rachel, it like I said in the first little one of these that we did, you know, we were supposed to go in October. That would have been the perfect time game-wise to go. We couldn't go for COVID. 19, at, at least in November, we were supposed to go couldn't go then we were supposed to go in december we couldn't go then and then january not the optimal time to go for game but it was great anyway and we went then and we were tested once before we left by a fairly gentle person once when we landed in mound by a relatively gentle person and then once when we left mound by somebody who had the tact of a charging rhinoceros and indeed, I felt she that my, people. you know, she hated people. I felt that my face had, had been nailed to the wall behind me by... My wife saw stars. Yeah, my wife saw stars. Uh, she rammed that tester so far up our noses that, I mean, I, I feel like I felt it in my stomach. Anyway, that was very unpleasant. Other than that, the COVID thing didn't affect us at all. Although it is quite prevalent, apparently, in Maun, and people are very careful about it. Mm -hmm. um, we've got so many nice questions. Thank you, everyone. Um, lots of people are asking, um, camera and lens, what did oh, we use? The camera I took was the Sony a7 III. It's a hybrid, so it's great for film and it's great for stills. It's got a sort of sensor that is not in the top end of the still sensors, but it's not in, the, and it's not quite the same as those really big pixeled, low light specialist film cameras it's a hybrid one between the two so it's great for what we use it for and most of the time i was shooting on a sony 200 to 600 mil lens and yeah i mean that's the main kit that we use for the wildlife you need quite a long lens ideally i would have liked to have a converter so i could make it even longer and we didn't have the right video head we had a better video head than we had in the kalahari and we've since been given another video head by an extremely kind man we met in Savuti. He actually, he does, if, you're, if you watch YouTube, he does all that 4K, slow moving, yes. beautiful stuff. His YouTube channel is called Africa Moving Pictures. I'm so, yes. His name's Robert. I'm so Robert. sorry if I get it wrong. Thank you, Robert. Um, but we came YouTube. across him. He was shooting something on an immaculate rig, beautiful rig, in Savuti. He was one of the only people we saw. And he said, I know you, and you you make wobbly pictures. And he said, I'm going to send you a video head. And he sure as nuts did. And it's sitting in the cupboard waiting to go to Mana Pools. So thank you for that, Robert. Yeah. African moving pictures. I think that is what um, it is. That's, I'm 99% I'm yeah. sure it is, and I'm really sorry it's not. But yeah. he does all that beautiful, slow moving, yeah. 4K, Lovely 8K stuff, stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Check it out. He, it's amazing. We've only got one minute left, and then I think okay. it's, it's going to... It's going to do what it did last time, where it switches over to the premiere. I hope it so did it we well. Just keep going, or do we need to stop? Oh, okay. I think we should stop. Yeah, we're going to okay. go. Thank you, everybody. We'll do this again 
Next week. Next, next week. week. Okay, yes. we'll do it again next Promise. week. Until then, bye bye and thank you very much. Enjoy. I click in. Yes.